Hey guys, welcome to part five of this week's food forest tours. Thanks for joining me today. Hope y'all are doing well. Got the pomegranate tree right here. This is the blueberry right up in front of it that was transplanted, doing really well. The pomegranate is looking good. Got some new shoots in there coming out. Up near the top, there's some really good growth starting all those red leaves right here. And down at the bottom, there's a really good shoot coming out right there that looks super vigorous that'll probably really come up good and add to the other branches. It looks like that main branch may have had a little damage. I can see just a kind of a nick on the bark so hopefully that bottom one will kind of provide a replacement to help out in case it is damaged but it looks like it should be fine and it'll probably heal over soon. I planted the summer crops in this area too. Kind of this, this area you know is is different than the ridges we were talking about in the previous video where those seeds were planted and um, I've also planted I think all of them in this in these beds generally um, that have they have the leaf mulch and then just some other stuff already growing in there um, I think you can see maybe some of the that's a bean seed I think it looks like right there and see like a squash seed right there so yeah all this has been planted out and hopefully it should just uh, they should be coming up soon along with the other ones on the ridges so you know i'm hoping that it'll it'll be the same as you know on on this type of soil i'm thinking that it will just come up really well here among the leaf mulch and uh, should start growing and help provide a living mulch which is i think is in super important to have a living mulch growing on to help the soil biology just become really really healthy and the living mulches you know will be dying and and have living roots also in the soil that are harvesting nutrients and creating all kinds of um, just habitat and nutrients for other fungi and insects and kind of the cycle of it all growing and dying at the same time and growing and uh, will really hopefully help provide really really healthy soil here here's this ridge right here zooming in you can see this squash seed has thrown down a root so it will probably be coming up with some leaves some seedling seed leaves like the cucumber we saw in the last video so that's really really exciting to see I think I've seen a few of these uh, beans putting down some roots I hadn't looked super closely at them yet but um, as you can see sometimes they like they'll just be right on the surface and germinate like the um, like the squash seed right here sometimes they kind of wash into these little crevices and kind of get covered with soil so it kind of gives them a diverse you know different types of some of them are just laying on the soil and get wet from the rain some of them are covered with a little bit more dirt so you kind of get a little bit of diversity and and um, it's selecting you know seeds a lot of these beans I have seen have actually died um, like that one looks like to be one that um, just for some reason it, it may just, it looks like it rot, maybe have some bug damage, um, like this one as well. So, you know, it's kind of selecting, and as you can see this one, here we go, is one that is putting down roots. Right there is the root coming out, and uh, so it will select naturally for ones that can be harvested in this way, where you, where next, when I save the seed from these crops, then, then the next year should most of them will hopefully not rot and they would come up you can see the little green roots coming out of that cucumber I think it is yeah cucumber seed and um, so that, that is looking really encouraging and so hopefully they will be coming up like the cool weather crops soon this is the European plum that was just kind of growing like crazy <laughs> It looks really healthy. It may have had some, um, this one was also, we had the, a big windstorm is what did it. It kind of blew over a few of these fences. So um, it looks like it may have been a combination of, it might have been munched on by some deer or, um, or it may have looks like it might be a little bit of bug damage maybe um, just early in the year. Um, we have had some really cold weather, so it could have been, I don't think it's frozen, but it's gotten pretty close to it. So that new growth might have kind of gotten damaged from that. But the other growth looks really healthy around it and um, this top growth is probably going to become the main leader it's uh, looking really good and healthy you can see all those just little little tiny leaves just coming out from it everywhere it's a good really good sign that it's looking really nice and healthy 
Right over here next door is some more of these. Uh, you can see it's right next door to the pool. So it's a little, this is a ridge that was completed. So it was um, also sown seeds. You can see some of the beans on there and some of the squash seeds and other stuff and cucumbers right there. So all this has been planted out as well. It only took me an hour, maybe an hour and a half or two tops. I, I'm thinking it was much more closer to an hour probably. It, it might have been close to two, um, but definitely not more than two. For a lot of these ridges and the fruit tree mounds uh, were all planted out by that just simple scattering and it makes it, oh my gosh, so much easier than, uh, you know, if I was to be digging rows, you know, for, for every single one of those. Um, that would take me probably three days. So um, really, really encouraged that they're coming up so well here. I've planted them that way for about um, two, I can't remember if last year was the first year that I did it in the garden or maybe two years. I think, I think it has been two years uh, that I've just sown them, but it was on a more, um, it was like a, I would sow them and it was more like, like kind of on like a, the, they were like a leaf mulch and I would kind of rake it all back and plant and then put back a little bit of mulch as it came up and some of sometimes I did just kind of leave it or plant into like a living mulch that was kind of light like that and um, it did really well but I'm really excited to see that it's growing well and just these open mounds just being scattered and they hadn't all washed off you know in the rain and um, it looks like I'm hoping that they'll also come up well in these mounds too around the fruit trees this blueberry is just looking super healthy right here on the corner in front of this fruit tree. Got this little pool that's really filled up. Oh yeah, it has rained and kind of filled up all the pools in the full food forest. Kind of to the top, you can see there, um, kind of filled it right to the edge of where if it overflows, it'll go down that way. So they are all looking really good. And got some new growth coming out from the fruit tree or this apple tree right here in the middle. You can see that there's a super healthy shoot that's growing really fast right down there at the bottom. There's some type of bug. I don't know if you can see it right there. Some type of beetle. But uh, hopefully that's something that'll eat the ones that'll chew on the plants. <laughs> and um, this over here is the spot that's protected with the just natural limbs for the blueberry. I'm going to go try to get over on that side and take a look at it. All right, kind of looking at it at the, at, from the other angle. And that blueberry is done super well so far. You can see the sticks and limbs have done really good protecting it. It has zero deer damage, it looks like. Lots of new healthy growth coming out all over the place. And uh, it looks like it'll probably send out a vigorous shoot, I'm guessing, once it kind of um, gets really healthy as it is, it'll probably send up a new vigorous shoot to kind of get some new growth coming up tall amongst everything else. And then these, as these stalks right here die, they'll also provide like a second layer of protection as the blueberry gets bigger. So that'll be really good. Going right over here on this ridge, you can see kind of what I mean here about some of it, you know, rots. Like, uh, sorry, that twig was poking me. <laughs> Provides good protection from deer and humans that are, <laughs> they would step on a blueberry. But um, down here you can see that like this is a half of a shell of a, of, a, um, of a squash. So, you know, an animal could have gotten into that or it could, you know, it probably just could rot too and fall apart. So, you know, not all of these will make it, but, um, you know, right on here, here's some ones sitting on top that all look really healthy. So, kind of just depends. And uh, ones like we mentioned earlier will get selected that will be less rot resistant or you know have a better chance at surviving anything you know in the future some lettuce down there around this pear tree it's the one that's kind of temporarily stopped growing but looks super healthy most of these trees i did you know completely girdle below the um, soil line and then added up this soil around it so um, this one was one that has been struggling in a really wet spot um, throughout the year, so it's probably, you know, a combination of mo most of the ones that I have, you know, girdled and then 
the reason I girdle and add the soil, you know, is to create, to encourage them to be a own root fruit tree where they send out their own roots and are not using the rootstock roots, which uh, in my opinion and um, just from different things I've seen and read, it should encourage the tree. It'll probably make a bigger tree, but it'll also make a healthier tree probably that will not have any of type of, you know, um, interference with it being, you know, the rootstock variety versus the, the named variety grafted onto it. It'll all be roots flowing up directly to its own um, variety. And uh, so this is probably more likely because of the other ones are, um, are doing so well still and putting on so much growth. This one had really struggled and looked uh, a lot worse than this last year actually. So it actually is probably recovering from being in such a wet spot and just having you know so little energy stored up for this year. So I'm predicting that once it really gets settled in, once hopefully it puts out some good roots into this soil and this soil also has become more healthy with more things growing in it, it's just gonna put out a good flush of growth hopefully soon that'll be really good and the leaves look have just looked a lot healthier than they have before so that's really encouraging to see this little apple tree is looking really good as you can see it didn't get very tall last year but the new growth on it looks really healthy right here and it's just starting to come out on that main shoot right there so really glad to see that's looking good and it's probably liking being on the mound right here and growing really good and this is what fire blight looks like on a pear tree. So you can see this branch has been hit quite hard with it. Most of the clusters are completely infected. Here's one that is not. That one looks, you know, really healthy. These late blooming ones were hit pretty hard by it. Almost all those spots you can see with the dark leaves right there is where the blossoms get infected with the fire blight and it kills most of the whole blossoms which is we've had a pretty wet spring and so that's probably contributed to it some let's see if we can find a few healthy ones left and yeah sadly it is very few and far between the odd pair every once in a while but a whole crop of pears on a pear tree went bye-bye just as quick as that and um, this tree has definitely been susceptible to fire blight in the past and has had similar issues so not surprising unfortunately but it was looking really good so far and saw lots of good pears last week so I was really encouraged but this variety is a susceptible variety and um, I'm hoping to help strengthen the tree I have not put a mound on this tree yet it is a very large tree I am hoping to get a very large mound put around it this year because it is in a very, very wet spot where it is. So it's probably not helping the health of the tree and helping it fight off the fire blight. It's, it's improved significantly in fighting off the fire blight just occurring in the actual tree. Hardly any of the tree, except maybe about a handful of branches, were just affected with fire blight in that way. And... As you can see, this tree, this tree is not pruned at all. It is super thick, growing all in and amongst itself, and yet it is completely fire blight free for the most part, except for, you know, five branches, you know, is very minimal on a tree this size. And, um, yep, but it didn't definitely had trouble with the blossoms on the fire blight this year. So, um, definitely having a variety in an area that is susceptible from fire blight will definitely help <laughs> but um hopefully picking this mound around the tree making the soil super healthy right here will help this tree fight it off even in the blossoms in the future too and i plan to get a lot of stuff growing around it too to shade the soil and have a nice living mulch and getting it really healthy and hope, i'm thinking that hopefully that will maybe help have some good pears for next year thanks for joining me for part five of this week's food forest tour. I will see you guys soon in part six. Bye guys.